Hey guys, it's Brooke here from Vintage Gardener. Welcome back to my channel. So it's June 15th, it's after work. Um, it's nice, we had a rainstorm, it actually cools things down a bit. And so I'm gonna do a, a garden tour. Um, I know I mentioned in a previous video, I'm gonna do them in sections. So this is gonna be really, really long and I'm just gonna break it up and post it. Um, so first things first, let's start off with the, um, with the, uh, privacy hedge because there are some definite changes since the last time I videotaped that. Oh man, these poor plants. <laughs> I need to, you know, this with this hedge, I need to get it on water. Um, the ones I planted that I got, the hydrangeas that I planted that I got from, um, who was it? Stone Bridge Garden Peddlers, for whatever reason, you know, I didn't put those on drip. They did, they did really good. But the ones that I got from other nurseries, I don't know what the deal is, but even though I gave them like um, bone meal and stuff this past, you know, when I put them in, they didn't have the kind of growth the other ones did. So let me turn the camera around. Okay guys, so first things first, I think something is eating my hydrangeas. Uh, I think it might be deer, so I need to get some deer repellent. Uh, but as you can see, um, you know what, I'm going to try, this is going to be a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to try to flash a little bit of footage from the last time I did a tour because these hydrangeas, the ones in the front row, definitely have put on a lot of growth. Of uh, the ones in the back row, I guess they're a little bit, they're a little bit bigger, but I just notice, I'm just noticing it more with the, uh, with the, uh, with the front row. So as you can see, uh, the florets are developing. Uh, they are turning green uh, and they're turning white. And so they're getting ready to really flush out in bloom. Um, I'm not gonna step out onto the street because there's too much traffic right now, uh, but I think you can see almost all the way down how nice they are. And I'm gonna do a zoom effect right now, hang on. Uh, so that's the normal, the normal magnification and I'm going to go to three now. Okay, so now we're on the highest magnification, so I think you can see better. I think you can see better how well this hedge is doing. And so I think once, you know, it's going to look beautiful when it's a bloom and of course next year it should, they'll be bigger and better and it's really going to be show stopping. Um, so let me get back up here. Okay. So I'm going to try to walk slowly because I don't want to make anybody sick. But like, for example, this one right here, um, I'm going to pull out my, pull out the hose and water that because it's looking kind of pebbly. And there's another one down there that's also looking a little bit um, bad. Uh, the other ones, I don't know, some of these, like for example, this one right here is a limelight. It seems to be handling the heat a lot better than, for example, the uh, quick fire. So that's that. So since I'm at the far end of the parterre garden, I'm going to start with the, uh, I'm trying to think what section I did last. I think I did the green section last, so I'm going to start with the purple sections. Well, first off, I'll go give you guys an update on the green section. So um, if you guys remember, I was talking to you about the, the, um, the uh, foxglove, and I did cut them back. And as you can see, they've sent up little basil shoots, and so now it's blooming again. So that's really, it's really cute. But once again, at the end of the season, I'm actually going to dig these babies out, and I'm going to um, relocate some of them to the back bed, and some of them I'm going to put in the promenade garden. Um, the white gladiolus are blooming. Uh, the Shasta daisies have had their first flush, so I'm actually going to come in and I'm just going to, I'm just going to whack it back by like half. Um, the, there are chrysanthemums in here. Let me, um, I, now that I've cut the, the foxglove back, they seem to be rebounding a little bit. And so 
you know, especially the ones down here are doing well. I think there are some behind the Shasta daisies, but you know what? Once I cut these bad boys down, I think you'll be, you'll be able to see it better. Uh, the Lysianthus seems to be a little bit taller than what it was, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to make some changes about that for next year. But let's take st step back and take a moment to appreciate the purple section. Uh, my mom was loving the purple gladiolas. I, this is a mix that I got from, I think I got it from Wegmans actually. Um, so first off, here is the larkspur that I grew. Uh, this is the fancy purple uh, Piketty. Uh, I think the Piketty refers to the fact that around the edge, it's a little bit, it's got a darker color. Um, this is down here. Let's see. Okay. This purple thing right here, that is the Stokes color aster. Um, so it started off white and then it progresses into this color and then it's going to go to a deeper purple. Um, down here further is the Stellata um, Scabiosa with these gorgeous heads. Um, my mom made some bouquets and she absolutely loved it. Uh, this is the cornflower and let me zoom back out. Uh, this is the cornflower. I think this is one of the uh, ooh, polka dot mix. Uh, the hookara, as you can see, is flowering. Um, this is one of the dahlias my mom gave for me for Christmas. I can't remember if this is beautiful or, oh gosh. I'll put the name on the screen. Uh, but as you can see, it's getting ready to open. And then back there, that is the um, Solosia Cristata I think it's Sologia Cristata is the botanical name and it's Barbora purple. Um, so there, I see some dead poppy heads. I'll just let them self seed if they want. Uh, this is a day lily. This is one of the day lilies I got from the Oak Tree Acres day lily farm down the street. Um, this one right here, this is called um, Lady in Black Aster. That'll bloom in fall. Um, I have some Nigella at the front. It's supposed to be the purple kind. I don't know why it's coming up white, but I had a lot of them change color. Um, here's one of the purple. I think that's this, the centerpiece chrysanthemum right there that I got from Halden Garden. It's a little bit taller. Uh, I, I think it's maybe one of the shorter ones. Um, back there, we have the... Hang on, let me back up a little bit. <laughs> uh, right there, we have one of the sugar plum foxgloves. So that's not going to do anything this year, I knew. Uh, there is some delphinium and stuff peeking out. It's getting bigger, hopefully. And I think I see what looks like a lupine. So hopefully that stuff will bloom next year. You know, I just realized there are all these seed heads on the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, um, the flax. <laughs> uh, so if it self seeds, I'm not going to be upset because I really like that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start some more for the promenade garden. Uh, back there is the lilac. I did not start to espaliate like I was supposed to. I was a bad girl, but I'm going to work on that this year. Maybe this fall. Okay, so over here, um, we still have a, ver we have a variation on theme. The gladiolus are a little bit thinner over here because uh, I planted this side so late, so a lot of the corms were just bad. Uh, this is a phlox that I got last year. I can't remember the name. Uh, once again, I've got some of the uh, Solosia right there. Um, that right there is a chrysanthemum. It's actually getting really tall. And there's one down there. Um, I don't know what this thing is. I think it's an aster. Um, it, I don't think it's a weed because I have two of them and they're like equidistantly placed, which would indicate to me that it is it was actual planting. Um, this feathery thing back here... I think that's an aster as well. I'll see in a little bit because it should start blooming. Um, that's one of my daylilies. And I don't remember the name. I'm going to have to go and look at a prior video. And the hookara is starting to bloom down here. And so this section is doing quite nicely. Um, I forgot to dig that dahlia out last year. There is a purple dahlia in here somewhere. There's a couple of dahlias in here. They haven't started blooming. 
Um, the dahlias this year were very late in terms of blooming, the ones I left in the ground. Um, that one, there's a dahlia back there. Um, it's one of the pom-pom series. It's, I think it was called a purple rain mix. So that one's blooming, but like I said, the rest of them are kind of slow. Okay guys, this is the white section. A um, lot of good color in here. Uh, there's some phlox back there. Uh, there's the Echinacea Confections Milkshake back there. As you can see, there's a lot of yarrow. Uh, the Dusty Miller is actually doing really well in this bed. Um, then there's this one Scabiosa that's getting ready to open. There are some mums in there. I'm gonna have to uh, cut the daisies back because they're like big and overgrown and they're gonna start and they're flopping and everything. Uh, this right here is one of the hibiscus. I see a little bud on it. I think it's gonna take a little bit for these to get established. Uh, the zinnias this year did not do well in this section. I, I think, I'm thinking it may be a little too much shade, so I won't grow those back here again. Now that, let me see if I can zoom in on it. These tiny little things right here, uh, this, is, this is what is known as the Genghis Khan Japanese Aster. Now, it's starting, they bloom in fall, and they should really take off in fall, but I think it's really pretty that they're coming out now. Um, let's see if there's, oh, this is a better, this is a, a fresh flush of that Echinacea milkshake. And this, I think, is an apple blossom phlox. So uh, these are, of course, the foxglove, which I will be taking down. And, oh, this one is actually blooming down with the stalk. Um, I'm going to let a couple of these stay out because I do want the seeds because I want to grow some in the promenade garden.